Welcome back guys, this is Legit Lee here back again with another video for all my fans. Now, today I'm showing you um, basically all the boards I have for the A-Net. Um, I wanted to get this by a lot of people because if you're having problems with your A-Net like I've been having obviously, this is a how-to solution for a lot of things. Um, so let me just start by saying this is my first board that I got with the ANET. Now if you looked at my channel and seen the other video, I made a video about ANET problems and the reason why I made that video is because the company I brought the ANET from off of eBay, they messaged me, told me to make a video of what the problem is with the ANET just to see if it was actually something that was um, a faulty part or if it's just something I'm not doing right. So I made the video I put it on YouTube for you guys, and I even uploaded it to the website they wanted me to upload it to. And they told me that it was definitely a factory part, like a factory mess up, basically. So it had nothing to do with me. And it was about the e-motor right over here. The extruder motor just wasn't extruding, it wasn't moving, it wasn't doing anything whatsoever. And I even tested the extruder motor on these other, mother, uh, other mo motor ports to see if they actually would work and that motor was actually working it wasn't the extruder motor the motor itself it was just a port and probably the driver over here all these um chips that are on here those are not chips those are heat sinks and they're attached to a chip and those chips are actually uh, motor controller chips they're for the stepper motors to actually move and be told by the arduino ide how many steps to take and it's um, how much power to be given to the motor and how to make it work and all that. Those are the chips to do it. Anyway, um, the e-motor wasn't working so I had to wait for them to send me a brand new motherboard from China that was going to take me two, it took me a month and a half before I got that motherboard in. So, since I knew it was coming from China and it was going to take forever, I already had the printer built and I didn't want to wait that long. So, I bought me another ANET A8 motherboard from some local U.S. Uh, eBay seller. Bought it for uh, about $37 to $38 and that's including free shipping. And... Um, it worked great. As soon as I plugged it in, I didn't have any problems. The motor, all those um, 3D printed videos that you've seen so far was ran off of this one motherboard right here. Now, just uh, after about a month and a half of me using it, the motherboard actually just fried on me. You can see the that's the Z motor controller chip that fried. You can see it's burnt out. You can see Z motor one and Z motor two right before the E motor. Those two ports. That's what it's connected to. To that chip right there. Now, my Z motors won't work anymore on this board, so this board is literally trash. But this motherboard over here, the E motor doesn't work, but both Z's, X, and Y still work. And I can use this motherboard for a CNC machine or a plotting machine which actually you just like stick a pen or a pencil or a sharpie or whatever you want to use, stick to it and have it draw out like shapes and designs and pictures and stuff like that. Now so this board is still usable. I could still use this for something. This board since I can't use my Z's this is literally garbage. I have no re real reason to be using this mo motherboard at the moment I don't know for sure all I know is so far that I know of right now this Z motor is a very big problem being out on this board so on to my next part of this the after I burnt this motor this uh after this motherboard burnt out on me literally the day after this burnt out the one from China came in <laughs> it was a weird coincidence but that's what happened and I just want to show you the difference between the one from America and the one from China. If you could see the difference, you can actually kind of see the difference already. But you see how dark the motherboard is compared to the one from China? 
Now they all look exactly the same, ports and all is in the same uh, position, but the dark, the coloration of the bottom of this board, this dark red, compared to this like orange color, you can see the difference. So anyway, um, I plugged this motherboard in, still wasn't able to get it to heat up. Now the motor ports were working just fine, but for some reason my heaters weren't working at all. And I don't know if that had to do with my thermistor or not, because my thermistor was acting up, and I'm going to tell you why in a second. But um, this board didn't want to work. So I got fed up and bought me another board from the same uh, same supplier, I think, that I got from this one. So I bought another board. Having the same issue. Doesn't want to heat up. And I think it's because of my thermistor. Now I'm going to get back to that. A thermistor is a temperature sensor reader. Basically, it's the little part that goes literally inside of your heater end. You see right here, this is your this is the original ANET uh, direct fed or direct feed, whatever you want to call it, um, extruder hot end. And there goes the port that holds inside your um, heater block right here. That's where it holds the little heater tube. And um, it just gets mounted. You see that little screw head on the bottom. It just, you tighten that to keep it secure in there. But on the other side, you see right here, your thermistor goes inside that hole. And then this little hole right here is to screw it down into place to keep it in there so it can measure the whole temperature of this whole bottom heater block that's what this is this is a heater block or hot end whatever you want to call it and then right there that's your nozzle that extrudes to your filament and I'm trying to get a decent picture of it so you guys can see and you see the little hole right there okay so your thermistor right here goes inside of that hole I just showed you and it measures your temperature on your heater see your heat from uh this is your heater that's the the heat hot end and then your bed has one as well it has a thermistor too built into your bed and then you set your um amount of uh heat that you want so i'm at 240 and then you know your temperature rises and becomes whatever heat you want it to be at so um my point here is for some reason I wasn't getting any heat. None of the heat was working. So I think it had to do with my thermistor. I think the thermistor is either messed up or something was not right. Because I wouldn't understand how two motherboards from two different companies, no less, one from China one from America. I mean I'm pretty sure they got this from China maybe, I don't know. But it can't be the same coincidence that both of these um, motherboards have the exact same problem. So I tested it out on another motherboard. Not from ANET though. I did not mess with any more ANET motherboards as of yet. I went ahead and had bought a while ago a Arduino Rip Wrap Ramps 1.4 motherboard. The whole shebang. It came. I got the end stops that's supposed to go with it. I got the uh, microcontroller chips that go with it. I think they're like 4988 or something like that. I forget the, n the number for it. It's not the best one because there's another chip that's the, like TMC 2100 or something like that too. They have all these weird names but um, basically there's the basic chips is what I got but they have better versions of those chips. They run hotter but they make the motors run Faster, smoother, quieter, better. They're just great. But um, anyway, so I bought that kit and installed it on my ANET. And you can see over there that there's a lot of wiring going on or whatever, kind of. And like I haven't got it completely touched up because I've still been running stuff. And I actually just strapped my um, zip tied my control board, my LCD interface onto the front of my ANET's LCD interface. But, uh, so I got that working. I used the same thermistor 
that I had from the Audrino, I mean from the ANET that I bought. So the very first a um, thermistor that I got, I'm using that very same one on the new board that I have. And I'm using the same heater block as well. Not the heater block, but the heater itself. But um, what I'm trying to get at is I was still having a little bit of a problem with my thermistor. My thermistor wasn't reading and I had to go back into seeing what was going on. So I took the part, the heater block, and was testing out stuff, trying to make sure it wasn't my heater. I was testing the continuity using a um, multimeter. You know, if you touch the two, if you set it to continuity, you touch the two prongs together and it'll buzz and make a beep sound. That allows you to let, it, let, it lets you know that the wire isn't broken and how much uh, ohms and resistance or something like that. Anyway, um, so I was testing that out and then I noticed, not on this one, but I noticed the, you can see if I could get that to just like zoom in here. Hold on. Okay, come on. Not that. Here we go. Okay, you can see on here there's, you can see the wiring, right? You can see if that plastic little tube wasn't on that wiring, it would be touching against the heater block and everything. I think that was what my problem was. So like um, on my first thermistor, that's what the problem I was having. I seen the heater block the was like grinding up against the side of, I mean the thermistor is grinding up the side of my heater block. And I'm gonna show you what I mean right now. So say this would, you know, this was inside this hole right here. So let me do that real fast. Okay, that was in the hole and this was face down and it's being compressed into, into the side of this heater block using a screw. Now that compression was melting away this plastic uh, sheathing of the wire and it was throwing off my readings I'm guessing or something was, like that was messing up my thermistor to where it didn't want to work on my ramps board. So, um, after I tinkered with it and put some electrical tape and some heat resistant tape, the tape that comes with your uh, thermistor setup and all that, it's wrapped, already wrapped around there. It's like a yellow-ish filmy tape. It kind of looks like uh, scotch tape, like the clear scotch tape, but yellow looking. Um, I, after wrapping that up and trying to get it to keep it, um, you know, confined, inside of itself so that way it didn't touch against my heater block um i got it to work for some reason it started working again the heat is exactly where it's supposed to be at 240 and my bed is working too there was never a problem with the bed but the, for some reason the bed didn't want to heat up either which is kind of strange but i really feel like it was because of my anet board the the merlin software i think has I haven't read through the whole entire software of Merlin, not the whole entire code, but I did know that there are safety features within the coding of Merlin that's installed on the Arduino IDE that will stop um, heat from going anywhere if you know temperatures are wrong or thermistor isn't connected or something like that because of the fact that if something like that was to happen, it wouldn't burn up and melt and catch fire and all that stuff so they preset factory um factory codes like that inside the inside the software so that may i really feel like i'm 99 percent sure that that was the problem and why these two motherboards wasn't heating up so they may not be broken at all it because i know my bed is fine but the bed wasn't he heating up either so it had to be that the thermistor was faulty and acting up to where it, it didn't want to heat up anything to protect itself from burning up. Because if it burns up, obviously you're going to melt everything. You're going to catch your whole house could get caught on fire with stuff like this because these are really extreme heat. And with plastic being around it, everything would just start to melt then the melting will start catching flame and then that flame will catch everything else on fire so they're trying to prevent any kind of unnecessary 
hazardous fires. So the coating, I feel like, is what's stopping these two motherboards here from heating up. Because this is the heat bed and this is the extruder's um, heat, uh, heat block, your heater end. So it shouldn't really affect this one because that one right there, you can see right here, BT is bed thermistor. So that has its own thermistor. So it would make no sense that the bed's power and thermistor isn't going to heat up. So it had to be my E thermistor, the uh, extruder thermistor, since that wasn't acting right and it's on a different port, it's telling itself, hey, this isn't working. And we're not going to heat up your bed if this isn't working because you could catch something on fire. It could be really dangerous if we do that. So how about we don't heat up either one of these until you get this fixed? Because if you don't get this fixed, then everything can burn up. So we're not going to heat this up or your bed up because this isn't working anymore. So fix this first, then we'll heat your thermos, your heat in, and your bed for you, no problem. And that's basically what the code is trying to tell you, is hey, this is not going to work, so we're not going to heat up your bed, because this isn't going to heat up either. And we're not going to allow you to heat up your bed if this isn't going to heat up and uh, because of a faulty part. Now, if you're doing it like on Pronter Face, that's a different story. You can heat up your bed by itself or your extruder by itself. But if you're doing, if it's seeing, if it's showing that there's something wrong with your thermistor, then it's telling your code, hey, um, the thermistor isn't working, so we're just going to not let you use anything now, just to be on the safe side until you get this fixed. So if I'm wrong. You know, you guys let me know, but I really feel like that's the reason why the these two boards wasn't allowing my thermistor, I mean, it wasn't allowing my extruder or my bed to heat up. So if I'm right, you know, you guys like comment below. Let me know what you think about this video. Please like, subscribe. Um, I did get, like I said, the ramps is working just fine. You can see this is, um, Pronter face is connected. It actually is connected right now it works and everything and you can see the temperature readings I'm at 240 that's my extruder zero set target 240 right below the 250 line and my bed is at 100 and the bed right here is at the 100 line so perfectly working no problems with that I'm going to do some test prints and see if I could get this to actually start printing right because I've been actually printing two times the size of my original prints and that's because in the Merlin software that I downloaded I had to calibrate the numbers for my, st my <clears throat> for my stepper motors so that's the reason why I was like printing way too big but um other than that I think for sure that this will finally start working let's hope to God if not, I could double check these two motors right, I mean these two motherboards right here to see if that was the reason, because obviously I just got a brand new, I got two other thermistors here, and one of them is brand brand new, right here, this one I just got in the mail today for three bucks off another seller on eBay, and it's brand new, no problems, there shouldn't be any problems with this thermistor whatsoever, it has not been used yet. So. Um, I'm gonna test all that out see if I can get something going here it's uh, been a long progress and I've had a lot of problems and issues as you can see but this is a learning experience I mean I'm showing you guys what I've ran into so if you're running into stuff like this these are the things you may want to check so yeah after the first board being messed up because there's extruder port second motor be uh, second motherboard being messed up because the z motor port z motor controller burnt out and then this third and fourth motherboards not heating up that is main issues but there's still progress so if this is if your stuff is messed up depending on what is messed up you can still salvage these you don't have to get rid of them so like um 
like this one, you know, e-motor, it won't work. Well, you could turn it into a plotter, CNC machine. Same thing with these. Uh, the heat ends don't want to work. Well, plotter, CNC machine, plotter, CNC machine. Three CNC machines, three plotters, or whatever configuration you want. You can have one CNC machine, two plotters, two plotters, one CNC oh, two CNC machines and then one plotter or all CNC machines whatever you want so these are still sal uh, salvageable so um, I just want to let you guys know that so just in case you were thinking you know okay I have to buy another motherboard maybe I should throw this out don't throw them out just keep it I mean it's not gonna bother you any I mean if it's, it's not really taking up a lot of space obviously I have four of them and they're all sitting on this small little Dell Latitude laptop that I have so they're not taking up a whole lot of space. Don't throw them away. Keep them. You can use them for something else down the line if you start really getting into all this. So um, I have a friend that actually converted the Anet uh, A8 into Skynet. He uses Skynet and it actually uses the values of that. And he turned it into not only can it 3D print, it could plot. He has a plotter on his. It can CNC, it can CNC cut into... I seen him do PCB cutting, and I think I seen him do plexiglass as well. I'm not 100% sure, but um, it was actually working. So you do have different opportunities here, and all you have to do is just swap your motherboards out if you want to, or you could just save. Say you do have the uh, Anet motherboard, and it is and it is fully working. The 3D printer is working, and all that. You could still upgrade it to the Skynet and turn it into a CNC or a plotter. And still have your 3D printer. All is a they call that the three and one printer. It can CNC, it can plot, and it can 3D print. So you have all three of them in one. But uh, yeah, this is the end of the video. Hope you guys like, subscribe. Please let me know what you think. Any comments will be great. And please follow me on Twitter at leavealez.com or I mean leavealez. And um, I'll definitely. If you guys message me on there about, about anything, I will see it, and I will definitely get back to you guys. And uh, if you have any videos that you guys want me to, like, show, like, hey, I'm having this problem. If you have any questions or whatever, I will get to you. I will see what I can do about it. I will research it for you to help you guys out. I've been doing a lot of research over the last two months about 3D printers because I'm trying to build me a complete printer myself. So um, that's, like, my next big thing is okay uh let's just say these three uh these four motherboards aren't motherboards and they're um the heat heat uh heat beds so pretend these are all heat beds i want to have four heat beds like the one you have right here and all of them go around in a you know a cube form formation and turn it into one entire big heat bed and be able to 3d print on that I've seen somebody do it. It was an amazing um, pro uh, progress that he showed. It was a how to do it video. It was really great. And um, now I want to do one myself. So I already bought a lot of the parts, obviously, to start building one. I'm just kind of trying to get uh, my money back up so that way I can do another one. I mean, buy the to buy the rest of the parts so I can start building it. So um, that's going to be somewhere down the line in the future. I say within the next five months, I should be able to build something like that. And that's like a very long estimate. I really feel like it's going to be way before that. But I just want to give me that little time gap just just in case. But um, yeah. So just imagine that instead of being able to print. 20 because that's what these heat beds are the heat bed over there is at 20 uh 220 millimeters all the way around so 220 from top to bottom 220 from left and right and then you have the z-axis that can you can make your z-axis go to whatever height you want if you're building your own printer it just depends on what kind of rods you're using it has to be that high so instead of doing the A net is the A net A eight is at a two hundred and forty uh, build height. So from top from bottom to top is at two hundred and forty two hundred and forty millimeters. So if I get 
all this set up, and that would be at... Basically, I did the math for each hot bed, and put them all together would be like 440 or 60. I forget the number. All I know is I'm from America, so like millimeters we don't really use. So I converted that number, and it turned out to be a little over 16 inches long. So that's over a foot long worth of print space. Oh, it's over a foot and a half long of print space. So I could build anything that's a foot and a half long. So like this laptop. Like you see the whole laptop bed. This is probably a foot long. I would say a good one foot long. So I could actually 3D print me a whole laptop case if I wanted to. It all just depends. Um, the sky, the bigger you can print, the sky's the limit. You know, like, that's the main problem that people have with printers, is, like, their build space. It's like, how can I, so people will just build separate parts, so say, like, you know, you want to build this whole floor right here. Well, I could print one of these, and do it three times, four times, and then connect them together. And then, bam, I glue the center, and then the other pieces, and then it's all one big piece. So, yeah, people have been doing it like that. I don't want to do that. I want to be able to 3D print the whole entire thing without having to glue anything. So that's uh, my next step. So yeah. Anyway, I hope you guys liked the video. I'm sorry that I'm rambling and taking so long. I just wanted to let you know what I'm up to and what's going to be in the nearby future. So please, like I said, like, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Follow me on Twitter. You guys have a great day. And this is Legit Lee signing out. Welcome back guys. I'm just making this quick video to let you guys see what the real size of that um, target print was supposed to be at. See this is the one I've been printing and that's the one I'm printing now. And I found out exactly why I'm printing this big. Well, started off printing this big. If you're building yourself a 3D printer, make sure that you um, set your Y, X, Z, and your E um, steps correctly. Because, see, mine wasn't calibrated for my printer when I went into the Merlin software. And that's the reason why it was printing this big, because the numbers were way too big on the Merlin software. And um, now that I got them adjusted right, this is the exact um, spacing that it's supposed to be at. These gaps right here are at five millimeters. Those are five millimeter gaps in between these like little blocks here until you get to the center. So, and as you can see, perfectly dead center on my 3D printer. It's really hard to see, but you can you can kind of get a glimpse of it. You can see the X lines directly on each um, spike here. You see the boxes have like a point and it lands on every line directly. So all that is set up perfectly. I can't get it any better than that. And you can kind of see through the white here. That's why I chose my white ABS because you can kind of see the lining through the white because it's kind of clear. But yeah, um, so I showed you guys how to center it. And now if you guys were having that problem about your 3D printer printing too big and you're having problems with it like you know centering it or it being too like your prints are too big even though like it's like doubling your size or something like that definitely go and configure your steps on your motor because you have to calibrate those but alright you guys have a great day and this is Legit Lee signing out